In this session, we're going to look at uh, Little's Law. First, we will um, derive Little's Law based on a very intuitive example uh, in the next couple of slides. Uh, and, and we'll see how uh, this, this basic intuition uh, that we have is what is basically shown, shows up in Little's Law. Um, Little's Law is about the, the interrelationships uh, between three uh, basic elements of process flow analysis, uh, flow time, uh, flow rate, and inventory. So, so we'll see the concept of it first, um, and then we will uh, see some applications of it. So we'll apply Little's Law uh, in some practical applications so you get some sense of uh, how it can be used uh, and, and how this um, um, idea uh, can be used to, to uh, come up with information that's missing uh, or to, to uh, look at processes and say, uh, how should uh, uh, they be performing based on these uh, um, metrics that, that we do have? All right, so, so let's take this simple example of two activities. So it's a very simple process, two activities. Um, uh, first activity A has a cycle time of 10 minutes. Activity B has a cycle time of eight minutes. So flow rate for each of these uh, activities, um, cycle time of 10 minutes. So flow rate is going to be the reciprocal. So it's going to be one tenth of a unit per minute for A. And for activity B, cycle time of eight minutes. So the flow rate is going to be uh, one eighth of a unit per minute of B. So we have one tenth of a unit per minute of A and one eighth of a unit per minute of B. Flow rate for the process, um, as uh, you probably uh, remember, the flow rate for the process is determined uh, by the activity that has the largest cycle time. So the larger of the two is 10 minutes. Uh, that will determine the flow rate of the whole process. So uh, the flow rate of the process is going to come from the flow rate of A, or it's going to be a 0.1 unit per minute, one-tenth of a unit per minute. Flow time of the process uh, is going to be simply the addition of the times of these two activities. So it's 10 plus 8, 18 minutes. So this is uh, uh, the part that, that's really simple. Now, uh, what you can also think about is how much inventory uh, there is going to be in the system at any point in time. Um, so notice that we're, we're not looking at, at Little's Law yet. We're not looking at any kind of, of a formula yet. We're not looking at any kind of a theory yet. Um, all I'm asking you to think, think about is how much inventory there would be at any point in time uh, in this uh, system. So it's an imbalanced system. Uh, activity A takes more time. So activity A is obviously going to be busy all the time, right? There's going to be one unit of inventory in activity A all the time, 100% of the time. But for every 10 minutes of time, activity B is going to be idle for two minutes. It's going to starve for material to come from A for two minutes in every 10 minutes. So you start the process at 9, 10, activity A uh, passes something, uh, start the process at 9 a.m., activity A passes something to activity B at 9, 10, uh, activity B finishes that at 9.18 and has to wait until 9.20 to get the second unit. So for every 10 minutes, activity B uh, is going to be waiting for two minutes. So with, with the continuous process working in every 10-minute period, how busy will A and B be? So what you've seen is in this system, there are two units in the system 80% of the time. 80% of the time, both A and B are busy. Um, and 20% and of the time, um, um, a is busy while, while uh, B is uh, starving for product to come to it, so B is sitting idle. Uh, so if you were to calculate the average inventory, you can calculate it uh, based on this, as, this, this idea of uh, one having, um, or there being two units in the system 80% of the time, 20% of the time there being one unit in the system, and that gives you 1.8 units, right? So um, inventory in the system based on there being no wait time between these two activities and based on how much uh, there is in each of these activities is 1.8 units. The same thing uh, you could have got uh, if you were to multiply the, the throughput time of this process, the flow time of the process, uh, with the throughput rate. So what's the flow time of this process? Uh, if you re recall, it's 18 minutes. What's the flow rate of the process? You're producing 0.1 of a unit per minute uh, um, of time. So take the product of those two and uh, you get the same answer that you got 
uh, by looking at average inventory from that perspective, from the long perspective that we took to get there, uh, and it works out to be the same number, 1.8 units. So um, this, this formula, this little formula, um, and, and uh, no pun intended, is, is uh, what is known as Little's Law. It's, it's known as Little's Law uh, because uh, John Little came up uh, with the proof for, for this law, uh, although this was a, a concept that was known even earlier, he was the first one uh, to provide a mathematical proof for it, and, and that's why it, it's known as Little's Law. So Little's Law is basically inventory in a system is a product of the flow time uh, times the flow rate. So uh, more formally stated, the average number of, of items in a system is the product of the time that uh, the item spends in the system uh, and the average flow rate of the system, I equals T times R. Now, once you know I equals T times R, uh, you can also express it as I equals T divided by the cycle time. You may recall that uh, flow rate and uh, cycle time are the reciprocal of each other, uh, so um, it, it, the inventory can also be calculated as uh, flow time divided by cycle time. Um, one note of caution here um, that, that you should pay attention to, um, it, it's, it's a very uh, simple formula, very simple concept, uh, but where uh, uh, a lot of us get stumbled on, uh, stumbled is, is uh, we take the units, um, we may take something in um, units per hour, and then we may take the flow time in, in days, or take the, the uh, throughput rate in units per minute, and take the, the um, flow time in hours. And, and if you're doing that, you're, you're going to mess up the calculations. So you have to be careful when you're using Little's Law to, to use uh, consistent units in all of the things that you're using to make the calculations. So um, we saw this very simple law, um, but there are a, a quite a few um, um, unrealistic assumptions, if you want to call them unrealistic. Uh, they're restrictive assumptions. I would say they're restrictive assumptions uh, that are required for this law to work. So the first assumption uh, is that um, only averages count, um, that there's no variance, there's no standard deviation that we are incorporating into the calculations here, uh, that we're basing everything on averages. Uh, there's no uncertainty, everything acts as predicted, uh, and, and that's what I meant by these seem unrealistic, these seem uh, very restrictive, but these are the assumptions that we start off with when we uh, use Little's Law. The other assumptions are that the arrival rate equals departure rate, and, and uh, what, what uh, you should be thinking about there is that uh, the number of units that enter the system uh, are the units that exit the system. Every unit that enters exits the system. Uh, there's no yield loss. Um, so um, uh, if you're thinking about uh, a, a line uh, for security at an airport, uh, there's an arrival rate and, and there's a departure rate, and they're going to be equal. People entering the line, joining the line, is going to equal uh, the rate at which they leave the line to go to their, uh, to their aircraft. Uh, over a period of time uh, that you're observing the system, the average inventory in the system stays constant, uh, and the average age of the inventory in the system is constant. Uh, what that translates into uh, in, in uh, lay, uh, layperson's terms is that you're going to have a first in first out system. So uh, people who, who join the line first uh, leave the line first and, and that's how it works. Um, and the, the last uh, thing that, that you have here is that Little's Law applies when the system is in steady state, uh, which means that if you're starting the system uh, with, uh, without any in, um, units within it, uh, the laws, the, the I equals T time R, will not exactly work out. You have to wait for the system to get filled for the system to be in steady state. Uh, so when you look at the security line first thing in the morning at an airport, uh, and uh, you see that there's nobody there, and then a lot of people start accumulating, uh, you want to wait for that uh, process to be in steady state uh, in, in, um, in, in how it's usually performing, uh, before you take these measurements, and that's when the I equals T times R will apply. So we know I equals T time R, what does that mean? How does that uh, apply? Uh, how is it practically useful? And the way it is practically useful is that, uh, let's say that you can only calculate uh, two of these aspects 
uh, the third one uh, becomes easily determined. So if you know um, the flow rate um, uh, and, and the flow time, if you know at what rate you are selling stuff to customers, that becomes your throughput rate, that becomes your flow rate, you know how much time uh, it, it spends in the system, uh, that becomes your flow time, uh, you know on average how much inventory there is in the system. Uh, and, and, and that's kind of a useful uh, tool when you are not able to measure three things. So just to give you a few concrete examples of this, uh, let's say that you um, uh, care about the average uh, response time for an order, but you have information on average number of orders in the system, you have information on average rate at which the orders are being delivered, you can calculate the average response time. You can calculate T uh, based on knowing um, the average number of orders I, the WIP, the inventory, and the average rate at which the orders are being delivered, or, or R, throughput rate. Similarly, uh, if you're talking about uh, average number of people that are waiting in a security line, uh, and you know the rate at which uh, passengers come and leave to, to get to their aircraft, and you know the average time that customers or passengers spend in the line, you can get the average number of people waiting in line. So if you're planning for, say, how much space you will need uh, for uh, passengers to wait at the security area, uh, you can get to that based on these other two metrics. Um, you can be thinking about uh, the bottles of wine um, on your wine rack, and you can calculate the average age of wine uh, in terms of, of uh, how long you've had it uh, based on uh, your consumption rate uh, and uh, the average number of bottles that are on that wine rack. So knowing two of these uh, makes the third one determined. Make third, makes third one, uh, you can calculate the third one. Now, um, let's do an exercise here uh, to end this session. A and uh, what you're going to do in this exercise is apply Little's Law, um, and, and it's going to seem very mechanical. You're going to apply it, uh, you're going to apply the formula to um, many different uh, aspects, uh, when many different types of processes. Um, and hopefully what you'll get from this exercise is you'll be able to see uh, the, the various applications, the various um, areas in which uh, this kind of a calculation can be useful. So you have two aspects of each of these um, contexts given to you, and then you have to calculate the third in each one of these. So we have this uh, table of information in front of us, and uh, you can see that uh, the three columns, each one of them represents, the first one represents the rate, what we've been calling uh, R so far, the second one represents I, and the third one represents T. We know I equals uh, T times R, therefore we also know that uh, T, if you were to calculate throughput time, it's going to equal I divided by R and your R is going to be determined by I divided by T. So we can do these calculations uh, based on the information about the other two that's given to us. So let's just do a couple uh, before we get to the solution. Uh, for the first one, for the semiconductor factory, uh, the WIP is 45,000 wafers, the rate is 1,000. Uh, 45,000 divided by 1,000 will give us 45 days time in inventory. And for the second one, similarly, it's going to be 150 divided by 50, so that gives us, gives us three days' time in inventory. For the third one, uh, it's a maternity ward where you're trying to determine uh, how many rooms you need, and uh, that's where you need um, your I, so it's going to be T times R. Uh, you have the throughput rate given to you, and you have the, the throughput time. 90% uh, of uh, moms uh, stay two days, and 10% stay seven days. So you can get the average throughput time based on that, and uh, the inventory or the number of rooms that you will need is going to be based on uh, an average of 12.5 mothers. Right, and uh, you can see here that uh, you can work through these solutions um, um, in, in your own time, but uh, what you can see is there are many different applications uh, right from a semiconductor factory uh, that is making wafers uh, to a maternity ward that's planning for uh, how much room they need to have uh, for the number of patients that they expect, uh, to a toll booth uh, looking at how much time is spent uh, waiting in queue at the toll booth, 
uh, to real estate, uh, which is looking at the rate at which uh, houses are being sold in that market. Um, and finally, a donut shop um, that is looking at the rate at which um, customers uh, come and leave the, the shop. Um, so uh, hopefully you've gained an appreciation for uh, how this, this idea of Little's Law can be used uh, to analyze processes uh, based on three basic metrics.